Greetings, citizens of Nova Scotia. We are anonymous. We have been watching patiently as yet another injustice in our system has occurred and is quickly becoming an international red flag. We all take notice and our patience has worn thin. On May 23, 2015, a young woman was out having a few drinks with some friends at a local bar. She went to another bar and then took a cab from there to get home. She did not make it home before being found in the back of a Halifax taxi cab, driven by Basim Aladin al Rawi, stripped of her pants and underwear. al Rawi was found to be facing the back, struggling to hide this young woman's clothing he had stripped her of, with his own pants undone. This young woman was inebriated. She was not conscious. al Rawi stripped this young woman of her rights when he started taking off her clothes in the back seat of his taxi. Immediately, he was found with his pants on the ground as he tried to get out of the taxi to greet the police officer on duty that fateful night. Immediately he was taken in, charged with sexual assault and stripped of his taxi license. That was the right thing to do. As some of you may know already, on August 5, 2015, Halifax Regional Council's Standing Committee, appeals ruled that an appeal would be upheld in our Rawi's favor. He can continue to operate a taxi between the hours of 6 am until 6 pm semicolon that's 12 hours a day, every day with a video surveillance camera installed in his vehicle. We have already made clear our issues with that, but to reiterate, so many issues with the camera could arise including our Rawi obstructing the video footage or turning off the camera at any given point. Let's not forget that rape and other forms of violence can happen during daylight hours just as easily as nightfall. Despite the view that the time of day minimizes the risk of offenses, the time of day does little to change the risk to public safety which is unacceptable. Also, let us not forget the other two victims of al Rawi's actions and behavior. They have not been put before the courts but that does not matter in the eyes of the common public. There is now a documented history of this violent behavior and we seek justice for all three victims, as well as the rest of the citizens. We do our best to combat sexual and other violent offenders to keep our streets safe but this has gone too far. In the past several years, we have seen little to no justice for A.T.A. Parsons in the legal system, but thankfully to the work of her parents and public awareness, we see a little of that every day when we talk about bullying and sexual violence. We have seen no justice for Clayton Miller apart from the awareness his parents and family continue to raise to the issue. We have seen little to no change in our systems despite what everyone learned from the past. Halifax Regional Council, your time is coming up short. You have been petitioned and challenged. One of our very own has stepped forward from behind the mask to challenge you, but remember, she is backed by the many. On August the 5th you did a gross injustice to that young woman who fell victim to being raped while under the influence by a man that was trusted in the public eye to safely transport the citizens of Halifax when you chose to uphold an appeal in his favor. Now, you must answer to the women of Halifax including the Women's Shelters Transition House Association of Halifax, the Nova Scotia Advisory Council on the Status of Women, and to all of our law-abiding citizens. All of who trust these taxi companies and yourselves to keep the citizens safe. You have failed us for a final time and we are not going to lay down for this one. Prepare to be tweet stormed and protested because we will be the zipper in your crotches and the fire lit under you. We are anonymous. United as one and divided by zero. We do not forgive. We do not forget. Halifax Regional Council, expect us.
we do not forgive, we do not forget, expect us.